Hi everyone. We are sure missing you guys. So we talked this week about um, finishing Wayside School, at least Wayside School is falling down before spring break. So lucky us, we get to read every day together for this week so that we can get done and um, if we want to move on to more of the of the Wayside School, we can, but hopefully in person. All right, so chapter 16, Love and a Dead Rat. Damien was in love with one of the girls in his class. Can you guess which one? He thought about her all of the time. Myron threw a red ball to Damien. It bounced off his face. Huh? said Damien. Why didn't you catch the ball? asked Myron. What ball? asked Damien. The one that hit you in the face, said Myron. Did a ball hit me in the face? asked Damien. Yes, said Myron. Oh, good, said Damien. I was wondering why my nose hurt. He had been thinking about the girl he loved. He was in love with Mrs. Jules. That was why he was always doing things for her, like passing out papers. He thought she was very pretty and nice. He thought she was smart, too. In fact, he thought she was the smart, one of the smartest people in the class. After recess, he hurried back up the stairs. Hello, Damien, said Mrs. Jules. Hello, Mrs. Jules, he said. You're always the first one here, aren't you? Asked Mrs. Jules. Damien blushed and shrugged his shoulders. Do you need me to hand any papers out or anything, he asked. It's so nice of you to ask, said Mrs. Jules. I think you're nice too, said Damien. Mrs. Jules gave him a stack of workbooks to hand out. Then she gave him a Tootsie Roll Pop from the coffee can on her desk for being so helpful. But don't eat it until after lunch, she said. I won't, he assured her. He ate lunch with Myron and DJ, and he saved his Tootsie Roll Pop for last. Joy and Mauricia came up behind him. Hi, Damien, said Joy. How's your girlfriend? What? asked Damien. He turned red. Who are you talking about? I don't have a girlfriend. You're in love with Mrs. Jules, accused Mauricia. You'd better watch out, said Joy. Mr. Jules might come after you. The two girls laughed. I don't know what you're talking about, said Damien. I'm not in love with Mrs. Jules. He looked to his friends for support. Myron shrugged. DJ smiled. Prove it, said Joy. Prove you're not in love with her. That's stupid, said Damien. How can I prove I'm not in love with Mrs. Jules? Give her this, said Joy. She handed Damien a paper bag. Your lunch, asked Damien. Look inside, said Mauricia. Inside the paper bag was a dead rat. Damien knew Mrs. Jules hated dead rats more than anything in the world. Put it in her desk, said Joy. If you don't, it means you love her, said Mauricia. I'm not in love with her, said Damien. Prove it, said Joy. Okay, I will, said Damien. The girls left. You don't have to put the dead rat in her desk, said DJ. We don't care, said Myron. You think I'm in love with her too, don't you, said Damien. Myron shrugged and DJ smiled. Some friends you are, said Damien. I'll show you. After lunch, he was the first one back in class. He carried Joy's paper sack. Hello, Damien, said Mrs. Jules. Did you have a nice lunch? It was all right, he muttered. Oh, would you mind getting the construction paper from the closet and putting it on my desk, said Mrs. Jules. Thank you. Damien went to the closet and got the construction paper. He put it on her desk. Then, when he wasn't looking, he opened the desk, when she wasn't looking, he opened the desk drawer and dumped the dead rat into it. He shut the drawer. Thank you, Damien, said Mrs. Jules. You're always so helpful. It's such a pleasure to have you in my class. Damien felt awful. Mrs. Jules read a story to the class. Damien could not pay attention. He kept wondering when she'd open her drawer. Damien folded his piece of construction paper in half. Mrs. Jules screamed. What's wrong, Mrs. Jules? asked Joy. Somebody put a dead rat in my desk, said Mrs. Jules. I did, declared Damien. Damien, said, Jules, said Mrs. Jules with great surprise. Why? Because I hate you, said Damien. You're always making me do things for you. Oh, I see, said Mrs. Jules. Should I write my name on the board under discipline, he asked. No, that won't be necessary, said Mrs. Jules. That made him feel even worse. Why did I have to prove myself to Joy, he wondered. I don't even like Joy. I like Mrs. Jules. He felt rotten. When the bell rang, Damien waited for, another, for the other kids to leave. Then he walked to Mrs. Jules' desk. She was grading papers. Yes, Damien? Do you want me to erase the board for you, he asked. Mm, 
That's all right, said Mrs. Jules. I'll do it myself. Damien sadly walked out of the room and down the stairs. When he reached the bottom, he turned around and ran all the way back up the stairs to Mrs. Jules' room. She was putting, she was just putting on her coat. I love you, Mrs. Jules, Damien declared. I'm sorry I put the dead rat in your desk. I did it because I didn't want everyone to know that I loved you, and I'm sorry. I love you too, Damien, Mrs. Jules said. You do? But what about Mr. Jules? Just because I love Mr. Jules doesn't mean I can't love you also. Love is different for most things. She picked up a piece of chalk. If I gave you my piece of chalk, if I gave my piece of chalk to someone, then I wouldn't have it anymore. But when I give my love to someone, I end up with more love than when I started with. The more love you give away, the more you have left. Damien smiled. I love you, Mrs. Jules, he said. He felt his heart fill up with more love. I love you, Damien, she said, Mrs. Jules. This is getting disgusting, said the dead rat, and climbed out of Mrs. Jules' desk and walked out of the room. <laughs> All right, chapter 17, what? It was purple, so Jenny read the story backward. When she finished, she threw up. Okay, said Jenny, so read the story backward, suggested Mrs. Jules. That way the beginning will be a surprise. But I already know how the story ends, Jenny complained. I only like stories with surprise endings. Good point, said Mrs. Jules. Here, you can read the story yourself. It's very funny, she gave the book to Jenny. All I heard was the last sentence, said Jenny. It isn't funny unless you know what happened first. Why aren't you laughing, Jenny? asked Mrs. Jules. Didn't you think it was fun a funny story? That made Dana laugh harder. There goes the giggle box, said Myron. Everybody laughed, except for Jenny. Dana laughed hysterically. Mrs. Jules looked back at the story, which she had been reading before. There was only one sentence left for her to read, and she read it to the class. Jenny made a face. She could still taste that awful stuff. And next time, you'll drink more of your prune juice more quickly, said Mrs. Jules. Jenny sat down. Mrs. Jules waited for Jenny to sit down. Jenny wrote her name on the blackboard under the word discipline. Well, that's no excuse, said Mrs. Jules. Now go write your name on the blackboard under discipline. I couldn't leave the table until I finished it, exclaimed Jenny. And then I missed the bus. What does prune juice have to do with anything, asked Mrs. Jules. Because I hate prune juice, Jenny griped. Why are you late? asked Mrs. Jules. I can't hear you, said Jenny. I better take off my helmet. She took off her helmet. Take off your helmet, said Mrs. Jules. What? said Jenny. Why are you late? asked Mrs. Jules. Jenny caught her breath. What? she asked. She couldn't hear her too well because she was still wearing her motor motorcycle helmet. Mrs. Jules looked up from the story she'd been reading to the class. You are late, she said. She hopped off the bike in front of Wayside School and charged up the stairs. Her stomach was still going up and down as she opened the door to Mrs. Jules' room. She put on her helmet. Then her father drove her to school on the back of his motorcycle. It was a very bumpy ride. Put on your helmet, said her father. I'll drive you to school on the back of my motorcycle. I missed the bus, Jenny grumbled. What are you doing home, asked her mother. She finally got it all down, then hurried as fast as she could to the bus stop. When she got there, the bus was pulling away. She sighed. Then she turned around and ran all the way back home. Her mother wouldn't let, let her leave the breakfast table until she'd finished her prune juice. It took her forever. She hated prune juice more than anything in the world. One day, Jenny was late for school. I don't know if anybody else is as confused as I was when I was reading that. All right, chapter 18, last one for today. The Substitute. Benjamin couldn't take it any longer. Today was the day he'd finally tell Mrs. Jules his real name. So what if nobody likes me, he thought. So what if I stop getting high marks? Hi, Mark, said Jason. Hi, Mark, said Stephen. Hi, hi, he said glumly. Then he started up the stairs. Hi, Mark, said Bebe as he took the seat, as she took the seat next to her. Guess what? We have a substitute. Yahoo, shouted Mauricia. Everyone in Mrs. Jules' class loved it when they had substitute teachers. They loved playing mean and horrible tricks on them. Benjamin frowned. He finally had the courage to tell Mrs. Jules his real name. Rats, he said. That's a good idea, said Terrence. We'll put dead rats in her desk. Let's trick her into going outside, said Joy. Then we'll lock her out of the room. But what if she tells Mr. Kiswater? Asked Eric Fry. So what, said Joy. She'll have to go all the way down to the office and then all the way back up. 
By then, we'll lo unlock the door. Mr. Kidswater will think she's bonkers. Benjamin looked at the substitute teacher sitting at Mrs. Jewell's desk. She looked like a nice lady. She wore tiny spectacles and had long gray hair tied in a ponytail. He felt sorry for her. He felt, felt sorry for himself. I was going to tell Mrs. Jules my name, he thought. I really was. The substitute stood up and walked to the center of the room. Good morning, she said. My name is Mrs. Franklin. Nobody said good morning back to her. Calvin handed Benjamin a note. At 10 o'clock, drop your book on the floor. Pass it on. Benjamin read it, then passed it to Todd. Okay, who can tell me what page we're on? Asked Mrs. Franklin. Page 17, called Myron. 112, said Mauricia. 98, said Eric of Ovens. 3,000, said Joe. Mrs. Franklin smiled. Hmm, I guess we'll have to study all of those pages, she said. Benjamin raised his hand. Yes, the handsome young man in the red shirt, said the substitute. He told her the correct page. We're on page 102, he said. Thank you, said the substitute. And what is your name, please? Benjamin thought for a moment. He looked around the room, then boldly told the truth. My name is Benjamin, he stated proudly. Several kids snickered. Thank you, Benjamin, says the, said the substitute. There were more snickers. You're welcome, said Benjamin. He felt good, even if the other kids were laughing at him. Mrs. Franklin asked a question from page 102. Jason answered it quickly. Very good, said the substitute. And what's your name, please? Jason looked around. Benjamin, he answered. Half of the class giggled. Well, thank you, Benjamin, said Mrs. Franklin. The other half giggled. Dana answered the next question. And what's your name, Mrs. Franklin asked. Benjamin, Dana blurted out, then fell giggling on the floor. Thank you, Benjamin, said the substitute. Everyone was hysterical. My, it is certainly a pleasure to teach such happy students, said the substitute. Who knows another question for, to answer, who knows the answer to question four? They all raised their hands. They all wanted to tell the substitute their names were Benjamin. They were having so much fun, they forgot to drop their books at 10. At recess, everyone congratulated Benjamin on his great trick. You're such a genius, Mark, said Todd. Benjamin is such a funny name, said Jason. How did you ever think of that? But my name really is Benjamin, said Benjamin. So is mine, said Stephen. Mine too, said Leslie. They all laughed. Do you really think she believes we're all named Benjamin? Asked Eric Evans. Probably, said Joy. She's so stupid. If she thought we were lying, she would have gotten mad, said Eric Bacon. The bell rang and they all hurried back to class. After recess was social studies. Who would like to read? Asked Mrs. Franklin. Every hand went up. Okay, Benjamin, said Mrs. Franklin as she pointed to Dana. Everyone laughed. Dana giggled a few seconds, then got control of herself and read from the book. Thank you, Benjamin, said the substitute when Dana finished reading. Okay, Benjamin, you may read next, and she pointed to Terrence. Everyone laughed. It was the first time all year Terrence had volunteered to read. All day, everyone paid close attention. They all wanted the teacher to call on them, because as funny as it was when Mrs. Franklin called else, somebody, else's, somebody else Benjamin, it was even funnier when she called you Benjamin. So everyone worked hard and listened closely, and as a result, they learned more from the substitute that, that day than they usually learned from Mrs. Jules in a month. When the final bell rang, everyone crowded around her desk. Are you coming back tomorrow, Mrs. Franklin? asked, Bacon, asked Eric Bacon. Please, Mrs. Franklin, say you will, pleaded Kathy. You're the best substitute we've ever had, said Jason. The substitute smiled. School is over, she said. You don't have to call me Mrs. Franklin anymore. That sounds so formal. Since we're friends now, you may call me by my first name. What's your first name? asked Mauricia. The substitute gathered up her things and put them in a straw bag. Benjamin, she said. Then she walked out of the room. Everyone stared silently after her. Do you think that's really her name? asked Joy. What do you guys think? Do you think that was really her name? Okay, so we'll stop there, and then we'll do chapters 19, 20, and 21 tomorrow, and then we'll keep going until we're finished the book. Have a great Monday, and I will see you guys tomorrow.